First stock today has been a market leader but tailed off recently, Telstra, John. Yeah, but it's just going through a bit of indigestion ex-dividend. Um, I still think you're going to make 10% out of it in the next 12 months uh, with two divs and a bit of capital gain. So I'm happy to hold it, anything up to $5. Do you like Telstra, Ross? Yeah, I do. I must admit that uh, Telstra is a company transformed. I think really uh, the way in which it's negotiated with the government over the National Broadband Network, I think the way in which the new management has really been able to focus on its broadband and its mobile strategy means that it's been winning customers from its competitors. It certainly had a coup because of the difficulties that uh, Vodafone has had. And I've got to say that um, under David Thody, I think this is a, a stock that's been renewed and great dividend in there as well. So another buy. Okay, yep. let's move on to all. You like all? All well, search. Energy long term is just something you've got to have. And if you're not going to go for the, for the big guys like the BHPs or the Woodsides of this world, then perhaps this is a stock you look at. All search. Buy. John, I can't get anywhere near the current value, but then again, it's, it's all in the future and it's way out in the future. So I'm, I've got a, uh, a sell on it. Let's switch the property. Had a good run recently. Mervac. It looks like an absolute sell to me. I've, I've got a value around $1, $1.10 on it and it's way above that. I know yield's supporting it, but the history of the company more recently, it's, it's previous gearing, it's all its issues. I just got to sell on it. Australia has got a fundamental shortage of housing. So you'd think a housing stock, that it's developing that, that it should be going okay. But all of those housing stocks have got real trouble at the moment, largely because, of course, banks are very reluctant and very conservative when it comes to these types of stocks. And until that changes, it's pretty hard so to see yourself getting out of the blocks, I think so. So, okay, let's go on to wholesaling and food, Metcash. You just sit there and say, are they getting squeezed the whole time by the two big majors? Mm -hmm. And I suspect that they constantly are. They've always found a niche, but if you think about it, they've got Aldi, they've got more Costco's coming. Life is just going to get tougher and tougher for them to sell. Do you think it's sell, John? I think it's a godsend that the stock's got the $4 after the appalling <laughs> results. And I think, I think Ross is right. The competitive pressure is immense. Uh, I can't see a way out for this company. And I think if I, if I don't, I'll be getting out of it pretty quick and forget about the dividend. Okay, condoms and medical supplies, Ansel. Mm, interesting, isn't it? Um, I've got a valuation around 15 bucks. It, it's uh, not a great investment for Australians because it doesn't pay uh, tax, doesn't pay franking. Um, but so they're, they're, well, I'd, I'd hold it. I think there's a bit of growth there, but I, I'm, I'm not encouraged to buy it. I've got the same types of pressures on it that every other Australian manufacturer has got on. Very high Australian dollar. Mm. Uh, it's got a pretty much locked up market share. So you sit there and say, where's the growth? So you're going to give me a hold? I'm going to give you a hold on that as well.